Hey, hello, welcome to this really fun tutorial by Flowmotion. By fun, I actually mean fundamentals, and by tutorial, I mean key. Because today we will bust some myths. Have some distance between actor and green screen. Have a different lighting setup for the actor and the green screen. Try to shoot with a fast shutter to avoid motion blur and make sure to have enough light on your green screen. Hey, and try to have your green screen as even as possible. So you know, sometimes I watch YouTube clips to get inspired. For this episode, I watched hundreds of green screen tutorials to see the state of the art workflows. And what I found is that there are two different ones. The first one I call the Marvel or Disney approach. Add as much green screen to the shot as you have. Add as many expensive lights to that to light that as even as possible and then mess it up with tricky markers all over the place. Because you know, someone will roto it out anyways. And then there is the second method. The so-called YouTuber method. So get a small green blanket, get two clothespins and try to hang it up with as many wrinkles as possible. And then add all of your beside lamps to it to further enhance the wrinkles. Oh, and in After Effects create as many layers as you can with the help of each slider available to try to reach the best level possible. Once there, hide the shot with too much motion blur, a cam shake, grain, lens flares and maybe some way too big letter boxes. Then render it out with a lot of compression and wait for no one to call because of the next Oscar nomination. Okay, do you feel addressed? Or you? You know what? That is because we have all been there. And after all, I found that there is a third way. My way. And that is a combination of many mistakes that I have done and many mistakes I've seen other people do in the past. So let's start with setting up a green screen. Hey, believe me or not, but I hold two records here. The smallest possible green screen to fit a person in with just one roll of gift paper and the biggest green screen stage ever created at that time with over 720 square meters. And here's what I took away from this. You only need green screen where you need it. So setting up a green screen, there really is nothing special to it. Try to get it as even as possible, really nothing more. And you will find a list of some green screen I use and I have used in the video description. Hey, and it always makes sense to also buy some of those here. You can only get the middle of the green screen super flat. Well, then place your actor there. No, the middle makes the most issues. Well, then move your actor to the side. But now I can see the floor. Hey, have you actually realized that I have not keep my feet and the chair because there was no green screen? Again, we only need green screen where we need it. If your green screen is too small, then decide on what's most important. And in this case, it's my head and my hands. Because also the more green you have, the more green spill you will have. And also the harder it will be to get the lights just right. So off to number two, setting up the lights. Where shall I put them? Right. Off to number two, setting up the camera, because that defines what you see in the end. And this has a lot of impact on the lights as well, as well as the placement of the lights. So two things are important here. First of all, the video codec. The best codec gives you the best results. And unfortunately, that's how it is. That may also be the reason why today's movies are not shot with the newest smartphone. So I'm filming this on a smartphone and this on the Canon EOS R5C, both on their best settings. And I really hope you see the difference. You can't see the difference. So here's a pro tip. Before placing your actor in front of the camera, quickly do a keying test. Only with one click. Now you see. So in second is the resolution. Because the bigger the stencil, the easier it is to cut out. So think outside of the box here, hey, or simply rotate the box to get almost twice the size. Oh, what about shutter speed to get less motion blur for an easier key? Okay, just real quick. If you have a fast shutter, keying will be easier, but the result will look as if you have set your shutter to a wrong number because, well, 
you have. But I can fix that in post-production. Also, this is true. If the movement is not that fast and not too much movement overall, but wait, if this is the case anyways, then you really don't have to reduce the shutter anyway. And if you really want to cut the shutter by half, you also only have half the amount of light coming in. And that may be your bigger problem. Again, don't believe everything you see and read on the internet. It is super important to have one light set up for the green screen and another one for the actor. And both of them need to be completely independent because now you get a separation between green screen and the actor. Well, fuck it, fuck it. My studio is way too small for two different light setups. So why not use that light for me and the green screen and that light over there that's my rim light as well as the green screen light. Mm. But having the green screen close to the actor also causes some more spill. Yes, because there's a difference between close and close. You also don't want to cast too much shadow on the green screen. And as soon as that is gone, you should be far away enough. And by the way, your spill concerns. When keying in After Effects, the key light effect removes spill by default. Oh, and if you disable that feature, there's also a dedicated effect called Advanced Spill Killer. Basically, those effects are there so you have a little bit more freedom to play with while shooting. So in a nutshell, if you have super expensive light that gets the job done and your studio is super big, great, use that. If you are a YouTuber and your bedroom is your <sighs> studio and you need five cheap lights to do the same thing, well, I don't care. On all film sets I've been, I've never heard a DOP say, whoa, the image looks great, but uh, we cannot start shooting because we achieved that with the wrong lights. In other words, if you like your coffee with salt instead of sugar, well then use salt. Use your camera as your third eye. Move the light around to get the most even green screen possible. The more often you do it, the better you get. Because if you only try to follow the instructions, you will not learn how to light a green screen. You will just learn how to follow instructions. Okay, enough movie quotes. For most lights, this works best if you not shoot them straight on the green as this provides you with some hotspots, but more with an angle. And if you can shoot outside, the sun is the best light source you can have. And if it is cloudy, the clouds will work as a super huge soft mat for the sun, aka the biggest light available. Hey, and even a big window front can be enough. Now everything is super smooth with no additional lights. And now comes a super cool visual effects on set trick that no one ever talks about. Hey, until now, how bright should the green screen be? Hmm. Ever thought about making the green darker when there's something dark in the background and make it brighter if there's something bright in the background? Is that too bright? And is, is this too dark? Now the spill light works in your favor. So now that we have the most even green possible with our setup, we want the camera to capture exactly that. So only one green tone overall. And that means we want the least amount of grain on our image. And therefore we want to go down with the ISO settings as low as we can go. This is 160 ISO. Hey, wait, now the image just got darker and we need either more light again or bring up the ISO again. And this is with a way higher ISO. Hmm. No, here's the shot as you see it. A little too dark, yeah. Here it is with 400 ISO, perfect. Now let us do a one-click key on both of them. Whoa, holy moly, the 400 ISO looks great on camera and like a big Swiss cheese in post-production. But wait, the one that was simply a little bit too dark looks great in terms of keying and, oh, oh, great idea. Now with just a small adjustment, it is as bright as the other one, but looks way better. You know, it is simply easier to make it a little brighter than removing all the grain. And do you have any other green screen related questions? So drop them in the comments and I promise I will answer all of them. 
So if you want to get back on track again, you can also watch this advanced keying tutorial where I focus more on the post-production side. So let me know if you will incorporate some of those tricks into your workflow. And for now, I wish you a lot of fundamentals, a lot of fun in After Effects.